What's up, guys, and welcome to the weekly Q and A. All right. First up, we've got Zach Lupaka who asks what we think the Knights of Ren will be up to in Episode Nine, or if we think that they'll be in there at all. I kind of think they will be. Yeah, I mean, that's something they introduced, and I feel like it would be a bummer if they didn't <laughs> follow through. Yeah. Especially since it was JJ. Right. Since it's JJ again, I think that that's like one of his little mystery box things that he put in episode seven, just like a cool sounding thing that we can explore later. And yeah, uh, yeah I, I think I'm just still assuming we're going to get a pretty big time jump between episodes eight and nine. So I, I think that'll allow for at least some of the Knights of Rin to be in there. It could say something about how we've lost most of them in the fighting or, but yeah, I think that they'll at least be addressed. Yeah. I think now that Snoke is gone and Kylo is kind of, in charge maybe the knights of ren will be prominent as kind of like his gang his bodyguards i mean a lot of people have brought up the fact that oh maybe there will be some power struggle maybe the first order isn't too crazy about kylo ren being in charge but the knights of ren could be the muscle that keeps people like hux in line they would be like kylo's praetorian guards right (laughs) i could see that kind of like a a ghetto version of the Praetorian Guard. Like, they're not... I don't know. I, I just really liked the Praetorian Guard, so I, in my mind, the Knights of Ren aren't as cool, but maybe they could be. Yeah. The way I've always pictured them is... And, and this is all speculation based off of just, like, stuff that we've been given in books, but the Aftermath trilogy introduced us to the Acolytes of the Beyond, and a lot of us just assumed, oh, maybe that's, like, the precursor to the Knights of Ren... There's no confirmation on that at all, but the Acolytes weren't Force-sensitive, and I kind of, in my mind, had this idea that Kylo Ren would come along, and he is Force-sensitive, and, like, we have all these dark side lovers, fanboys, that see someone that's like, oh, this guy can lead us, Mm -hmm. and he kind of takes control, so... But, yeah, I don't know what their role is. I, In my mind, they're not Force-sensitive, but they might be. I don't know. I mean, they're... Weren't they members of the Academy? The Maybe. Jedi Academy? That That's also potential based on what Luke said about, yeah, Kylo Ren taking a handful of his students. I think that could be hinting towards the Knights of Ren. So maybe my headcanon origin story is way off base. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't know. But I am excited to learn more about them. Yeah. Just I, because they have a cool sounding name. I do think if they're in the movie, I want Carrie Russell to be like the head of the or like the second head because i guess kylo is the head his of like lieutenant Man. yeah yeah just get, It'd get be some, cool to see her yeah an in movie female dark potential dark side user yeah because we've we've never had that on the big screen small screen yes but yeah. big screen no chase van dick wants to know if we'll be disappointed if we don't see any familiar planets in episode nine I don't know if I'll be disappointed. I do think it'll happen. Like, I could see, even though I have talked before about, like, there's too many desert planets in Star Wars. Let's get away from the desert planets. But Tatooine would be kind of a through line of all three trilogies. Mm -hmm. So it might be nice to revisit Tatooine somehow. I thought that we were going to see some familiar planets in episode eight, and obviously I was wrong, but I I don't know that I'll be disappointed if it doesn't happen, because I'm trying not to get too far down that rabbit hole of what do I want, what do I totally expect to happen. Yeah, I can't really think of anything that has to do with the locations that would disappoint me Yeah, at this point. There are some ideas that really excite me, Yeah, uh, but... If it doesn't happen, I'll be okay. I don't think I'll be too bummed out about it. Sure. This one kind of goes along with the locations question. Uh, James McCaffrey asks if the upcoming prominence of Vader's castle in the comics is hinting that we'll get to see it in episode nine. Yeah. So we're getting the Tales from Vader's Castle series and the next arc of the Darth Vader comic is called Fortress Vader and it's about his castle. So this was one of the things that I I thought that we might see Mustafar in episode eight mm-hmm. because 
Rogue One introduced that concept of Vader's castle, and I was like, oh, that'd be really cool to tie that in with eight, especially if Kylo Ren goes on some sort of spirit journey or, like, yeah. goes through his past. I'd still love to see that. So, yeah, my fingers crossed that Kylo Ren gets to set foot in Vader's castle. I think that would be awesome. What if that's where the Knights of Ren are? Maybe. And he, like, they're there training or just, like, waiting to be called, and Kylo goes there and... It's like, hey guys, suit up. Yeah. There, like, I'm in charge now. Like, nothing, no option there that doesn't excite me. Like, if they've been hanging out there for a long time, I think that's cool. Or if he visits there to explore his grandfather's past and, like, no one's been in there for 30 years and it's all, like, run down, I think that would be cool, too. Mm -hmm. I, I would love to see that location because then not only are you tying in all three trilogies, you're pulling Rogue One in as well. Yeah. Which I think would just be the sweetest. Yeah. Hopefully. So, yeah, that's our answer. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Barnes wants to know if we'll see any stories beyond Episode Nine, if it really will be the last entry in the Skywalker saga, or will they save the future era in the event uh, if they do in Episode Ten? It's funny, we were kind of talking about this last night. Yeah. Um, I don't know i think that signs are pointing to this being the end of the skywalker saga but like i've said before i don't think they're gonna definitively make this thing where the credits roll and it says like the skywalkers will not return yeah. or anything like that i think they'll leave it open-ended i mean let's say kylo dies then yeah that's the end of the skywalkers yeah, the, the Unless bloodline. There are some people related to Shmi out there. <laughs> <laughs> right. That we don't know about. Yeah, she uh, could have had like a brother that has his own super boring Skywalker <laughs> bloodline going on. <laughs> they're, they're doing nothing. Yeah. They're living they're trying to hide because they see all these Skywalkers messing things up and they're like they are distant relatives, <laughs> but we're <laughs> we're not them. Yeah. Um what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So I was, we were talking about this the other night, and I was like, so, I mean, Ray and Finn, like, I I don't imagine this would be the end of their stories and that we wouldn't see them anymore in movies, but I don't know. You said that yeah, my it might argument be. was that I think it would be weird if we ended the Skywalker saga. We had episode nine. We're done. But we're doing movies with Ray and Finn and Poe. Like, if that story continued, but it wasn't called Episode 10, just like a sequel to the saga that isn't an episodic movie would feel strange to me. Mm -hmm. I think that they will probably definitely continue their stories in books or comics or something. I don't know, just something about that would feel off. And I do think that, yeah they could find a way to leave doors open for an episode 10 at some point. But I think what their intent is now is let's say, let's assume that we're not going to do an episode 10 and let's wrap it all up so that this feels like one big nine film story that is complete. Yeah. I, I think that's what their goal is right now. Yeah. it's I mean, There could be just a never ending episode of numbers. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, those are right now are the big money makers. So they're probably going to see how does the Johnson trilogy do? How does the Benioff Wise series? And <laughs> I mean, they're a business. Like I can see them bringing in like, all right, we're doing episode 10. Uh, my hope is that they don't do that because I think we need to get away from the Skywalkers. And I think that'll open a lot more doors for content. But uh, to go back to the question, he asks like, are is Lucasfilm going to save that time? Will they say, we might do episode 10, so let's not explore the future? Or are they just going to be like, all right, Skywalker Saga's done. Let's explore whatever we want. That's a good question. I I think <laughs> the all the new trilogies and stuff coming, that's all going to, I think that's all going to be new stuff. But uh, will it be set in the future? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, yeah, I kind of feel like it probably won't be. I see them exploring the past a lot easier. Yeah. I think they probably need to figure out what are we doing in the future. I would be interested to see if they went back to something involving the Padawans, um, since that's what the game coming out is going to be. The Fallen Order? Mm-hmm. Like a 
trilogy or a movie to to kind of tie that game in. So back to See, I'm I'm of the opinion that we need to get out of the 60ish years that we have currently been living in from Phantom Menace to Episode 9. Let's go. There's more. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. thousands of years we can be exploring, so Obviously people want to see Old Republic. Um so fingers crossed that we'll get yeah something like that i would i'm just this is probably it's potentially me getting my hopes up but i'm like one of those the johnson or the benioff y series one of them has to be in the past i don't know why i feel that way i just think it will be that way a lot of people have said that the benioff Weiss stuff would make sense to be in the past because it's it might be similar to game of thrones so i don't know we'll have to see yeah what an answer (laughs) Mr. J.D. Rice asks if we think Episode 9 will be Mark Hamill's final performance as Luke Skywalker. I kind of think so. I mean, it kind of goes back to the last question. Will they do an Episode 10? And if they do, if it's part of the Skywalker saga, then you need some Skywalkers, I assume. But at least the intent right now, I think, is probably yes. I think so. Yeah. He could always show up in some i mean like uh in legends we saw luke's ghost visiting his like great great grandson Mm -hmm. and kind of haunting him like there's potential for him to meet up with an ancestor or a descendant or something but i i think that this will probably be his last one yeah i think for mark hamill i think this will be his last on-screen appearance books comics animated shows they could pop him into just about anything i mean as a force ghost agreed (laughs) or as a flashback you know so that's it for patron questions if you're a patron and you didn't see your question answered here just head over to patreon where we left you a written response if you're not a patron you can learn more by following the link in the description just a dollar a month will get you access to extra star wars explained content like audio commentaries for the films and we just released our commentary for the force awakens Full of fun facts. <laughs> Full of fun facts that uh, Molly looked up and read throughout. I did my research. And uh, I didn't know all of them. Yeah. And also, uh, we have started our Between Two Suns series. We have only done last week's episode, so if you already saw that, we haven't done a new one yet. Uh, but go check that out as well. Yeah, we're really excited about that series. Um, and we've got some some cool things planned. Yeah, so we're testing out long-form content, uh, basically while we figure out what equipment we need and what format we want to follow while it's in the testing phase we're making it patron exclusive but it will eventually be a series on the main channel and also just as an announcement or a reminder when this video comes out on saturday we will be at rtx in austin so if you're at rtx and you see us come say hi yeah on to youtube questions halo rook asks if lucasfilm could make more animated films so i guess like the Clone Wars film. Yeah. Sure. Why not? I think so. I think they do, the, they yeah. do what they want. I think the, the streaming series is, or the streaming service is a good place for stuff like that. I don't know would that you, they're... Would you meaning like a made for kind of like the made for Netflix films? Yeah. Okay. I yeah. I don't know if I see them doing another Clone Wars animated theatrically theatrically released movie but doing one on the streaming service i think makes a lot of sense yeah but if those do really well then maybe they will go back to theatrically released i'm just thinking because the clone wars didn't really do all that well in theaters Mm -hmm. i don't know if i see them going back to that well but maybe yeah it depends on the what kind of budget i guess yeah it would be um if they did something I know a lot of people aren't too keen on the Forces of Destiny type animation, but that's something that can be can be made quickly um, and low budget. So something in the style of that, maybe more for kids, I could see them making for the streaming service. Yeah, but yeah, I think that's totally possible. Star Wars Network wants to know which Skywalker had the stronger bond with R2-D2, Luke or Anakin? I want to hear what you say hmm. first. Um, I'm going to say Anakin. See, that's what I thought first, but I think it's probably Luke. And here's, 
I, I thought Anakin first, and that's because we have seen more of their adventures together. Mm-hmm. We have the Clone Wars, but really, they only partied for like three years, right? The Clone Wars was three years long. Anakin didn't get R2 until Attack of the Clones. R2 right. was on Naboo that whole time. So then we get, I guess, almost now seven seasons of a TV show of adventures with Anakin and R2. And clearly they have a strong bond. We just haven't gotten to see as many adventures with Luke and R2, but they were together much longer. Mm -hmm. They were together for the four years of the original trilogy. And then I guess 24 years, probably around there beyond that. So that's almost 30 years of adventures. We just haven't gotten to see them all. So even though my instinct was to say Anakin, I think the answer is probably Luke. So he prepares for these questions, and I just answer off the top of my head. So I sent you the questions. <laughs> <laughs> you had your chance. <laughs> Red Seven Standing By asks if the Disney streaming service could have the Ewok movies or the holiday special or any of the old cartoons on it. I... I- don't think they would put the holiday special on it just because they've done so much to get to try to get rid uh-huh. of that, but it keeps popping up on YouTube. <laughs> I I know that George Lucas hated it, and so I imagine they would respect that wish to not have it broadcast again. Which is kind of funny because I think if they said they had it, a lot of people would be like, "I'm signing up," but. <laughs> I don't know who owns the rights to the Ewok adventures or the old cartoons or anything like that, but if Lucasfilm and Disney do own all of it, I could see that. I'm not, I'd I'd be kind of surprised if they put it up there, but at the same time, if they announced it, I'd be like, not that surprised. So I I think it's potential. It it all probably more comes down to who owns what, and I Mm -hmm. don't know who owns any of that. I think the most likely... Of the three would be the Ewok movies. I agree. Um, but I just had a thought. What if they make a new holiday special? They should. <laughs> and it should be, like, just as cheesy. Like, I don't want a remake of the first holiday special because yeah. it's too precious. <laughs> <laughs> How kind of you. <laughs> Political. <laughs> um... But yeah, that would be really interesting if they did a new holiday special. I think that, again, with the streaming service, I feel like that opens up a lot of possibilities. To... And if they did a theatrical release, I bet people would go see it. There's no way they're doing that. They're not going to do a theatrically, unless it's like a fandom event. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. A fathom event, that's what they are. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying this right, but it looks like Sexy Blues... For the name. So I'd go with it. Yeah, I'm sticking with it. Sexy Blues wants to know our thoughts on Richard E. Grant playing Thrawn in episode 9. Is it possible or just wish fulfillment? Uh, I'd throw up the Force Center speculate responsibly tag on this, but I don't know. I mean, before Solo, I would have said, no way. They're never going to have Thrawn in, but Solo showed us that they're willing to take some of those risks and it's possible i kind of don't i'm leaning towards no didn't we we talked about this a little bit on another q a uh about just whether or not thrawn would be in episode nine and we i think we agreed that it would be too late in the game for this trilogy to introduce such a character yeah i feel like he had like a huge role in the movie which i i don't really see happening like, like the, I guess in my mind, I would imagine the Chiss ascendancy comes in to save the day at the last second, and everyone that reads the books and stuff would be like, "Oh my gosh, that's amazing!" But the rest of the theater would be like, "It's the Chiss ascendancy." Yeah. But then again, there's I don't know. There's ways to set that stuff up within the film. Uh, I just don't think they're going to spend the time to do that when there's so much other stuff going on just with the characters we already know. Mm-hmm. But And if uh, if they're treating episode 9 as a way to wrap up the story, I just don't see them introducing him. I would love to see him live um, in a movie, but I don't know. He could be another member of the Knights of Ren. He could be... I see him as a First Order guy. Uh, yeah, like a 
another First Order person now that supposedly Phasma is gone. Maybe he is kind of like taking her place in that role. I'm sorry for your loss, but I've been saying she's she dead. She dead. <laughs> she dead. We'll see. But uh, I've seen the photoshops of him as Thrawn, and I mean, they're, they're, every time that happens, it's kind of silly, but it's also like, I could see it. And I don't want to say just like, there's no way it's impossible because I would have said the same thing about if someone asked, is Darth Maul going to be in Solo? I'd be like, no, are you crazy? <laughs> so it, it's possible. I really, really, really doubt it. But I don't want to just say no. Yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, him or Carrie Russell, um, they could also be a new resistance general that sure. ha- that has to step in because we we still don't know what they're gonna do with Leia and her character. Yeah, I so. do figure she'll be used rather sparingly. Um, but yeah, as for Thrawn, I'm gonna say there's a five percent chance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Last up, we've got James Earth who asks if Lucasfilm offered us a cameo in a show or a movie, would we accept? Uh, and what if they offered us a position at the company? <laughs> well, we, well. <laughs> we've answered the one about the company before. And basically my answer is that I don't know because it, I feel like I'd be sacrificing part of my life as a fan. Mm-hmm. And that's precious to me. But also people kind of will ask this question as if it's a given that I would be hired or something. <laughs> and it's like, I don't think knowing a lot about Star Wars is what gets you a job at Lucasfilm. Yeah. I'm sure it doesn't hurt. (laughs) Yeah. But that's a lot of pressure, and I I don't know that I am qualified for something like that. I know at ILM it helps to be in the family. Sure. (laughs) (laughs) Because all the people at ILM that worked on the originals, a lot of their family members are now They're they're like trained as apprentices Mm -hmm. and came up. Uh, But I really wanted to answer the cameo question. Because, yes, (laughs) sign me up. Like, my dream would be uh, to be one of those pilots that just goes like, I'm hit and explodes. (laughs) Like, be on screen for half a second. I think I could handle that line. I think I could deliver it well. And then I'd explode. That'd be my dream to just be a a, a pirate. A pirate. A pilot that made the ultimate (laughs) sacrifice. I'll be a pirate, too. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, if I had more confidence in my acting abilities... Mara Jade. Oh, you're going that big. Yeah. That's not a cameo. That's a starring role. (laughs) No, I'm I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Am I? I'm kidding. Um, I don't know. I would want to be some sort of alien, like maybe a Twi'lek. That'd be cool. Just like a background, like sassy Twi'lek bartender lady if yeah my okay second choice if i couldn't be a pilot would be like the new wilro hood give me some modern day technology and (laughs) just let me run through the background of a scene yeah that's all the time we have for questions today if you want to leave a question for next week's video just put it in the comments below or sign up for patreon to join our weekly q a discussion and if you're at rtx remember to come say hey yeah if you haven't already please like this video subscribe to the channel and follow us on twitter instagram and facebook as always thanks for watching and may the force be with you